Hi everyone, welcome back to LearnStir.com. My name is Patrick Roshan and I'm a professional light painter. Um, thank you for being with us today. To, and, um, we're gonna talk about the studio, how to set up your studio, the darkness, and there's a few tricks here to know, a few tips I have to give you. But before we do, just bef uh, we were talking about tools and how, how to build tools and flashlights and stuff. You know, there's one thing that's important to have is uh, these are battery testers. They're really important because um, you want to be on top of it with your batteries and you want to make sure you have enough batteries and you do your, that your lights are powerful enough. One thing I do more and more is I try to go with rechargeable batteries. So slowly I'm trying to eliminate tools that I don't use much and trying to focus on the pro tools, the ones that I use uh, often, the ones that I love, and get rechargeable batteries for those. I know they're expensive, but they're worth it. If you could get, if you could get good batteries, it ends up being more uh, eco-friendly and of course uh, cheaper uh, on the budget. Um, when you set up, let's talk about setting up your studio. We talked about the camera, and remember to put your focus on manual. That's uh, very important. Get your cable release ready. Um, get some white tape, you know, white tape, black tape. They're very useful. Both of those are useful. Um, the white tape will help find stuff in the dark. Sometimes I'll put white tape at the tips of my tripods. I'll put some white tape on the uh, cable release so it's easier to find in the dark. Uh, because there's a bit of white on it. I'll find it uh, easier than if it was just black. I'll use the white tape to put markers on the floor, of course, uh, so I know where to put my model or where I want to light paint when I do my freestyle light painting, my katas. Um, now, I work, personally, I work on the, today we have a dark gray background, uh, which is uh, great. I love the dark gray background. I use it uh, often, uh, not often, rarely, because uh, my main background is black. I usually, I usually have black fabric. Even if my background is not even, for me it doesn't matter because I don't light paint in the background, I don't light the background. So usually in the pictures we don't see it. It disappears completely in the darkness. So I use fabric at, at my studio to, uh, uh, for my background between uh, tripods. Um, so today we're using the black gray, so I can actually use, with, with uh, dark gray, I can actually use, uh, use it to put some light directly on it and do some effects that will be darker, but they can be very rich. We need a, a powerful flashlight that we keep under the tripod, so if we're uh, in the dark shooting and there's a, you feel like the model moved or the, the camera's been moved, you can turn on your light, ask your model to close their eyes because these are powerful. So beforehand you say, okay, can you close your eyes please? Then you can check your focus. You can refocus and uh, check your framing and check if anything has moved with the, pa the flashlight. I try not to open the ceiling lights too often. I feel it breaks my mood. I rather stay in the dark and use flashlights the whole time to stay in that bubble, in that zone with, with my model or even with myself. If I'm working, I feel like when I turn on the big lights, it cuts my, uh, it's a bit like uh, at the end of a party, when the party's over and the big lights turn on, it's like, whoa, it really creates a shock in the system. So I try to avoid that. Um, red lights are useful because once your eyes are used to the darkness, um, using white light sometimes is, is unnecessary and it will close your iris again. So the red lights will, won't do that and it's good if you want to check something on your camera or if you want to uh, check something on your table, sometimes this will be strong enough for, for your needs. Or if you just want to see where you're going, where's the tripod, where's the wire and things like that. Um, I use other red lights like I'll have um, this uh, little red light I found in the store, I put a little red gel on it. I'll put this one under the camera also, just as a reference point. And I might put some close to my tools or my um, table, so I, I, I have reference point in the dark so I can move easier. Um, and I have also these little red lights that I can keep on. And I put a little piece of tape on it. 
These, sometimes, if I work with a, a few different people, if there's a team of people in the studio, I'll put these around the tripod legs so people know exactly where the tips of the legs are. So I'll stick these with tape, put it on a tripod. And definitely, if I'm working with a model, I'll put one of those red lights on the camera, close to the lens, not pointing at the model, of course, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put it so the model can see it easily. This is a, a very important tips and tricks because this will help the model focus on a point. If, if the model doesn't have a point to focus on, as soon as you take a light and move it in front of her eyes, automatically her eyes gonna move and follow the light. So if there's a point where the model can fix a look at, then it's going to help focus and keep the head um, and the uh, eyes sharp when you take your picture. That's one trick to keep the, the eyes sharp and the, the, the model sharp, but there are more tricks I'll tell you tomorrow when we do our workshop. So red lights, I can put a bunch of red lights everywhere. And now it's like the question is, how dark does your studio need to be? Well, if you're shooting at 100 ISO and uh, at f11 on a dark background, your studio should be 90, 95% dark. It doesn't have to be 100% dark. 100% dark is very hard to work in because you have to find everything and where's everything and where's the person. It's harder. Uh, when I did the 360 degree project with 24 cameras, in that case, I had no choice but to work in 100% darkness or else there was a camera pointing in the direction of the light and it would show up in the picture. So we didn't have a choice. You can see the project on my website at patrickrochon.com. Um, so when I'm working with people, usually 90, 95, w w what does that mean? Well, there's a few ways to find out. First, you can use a light meter. These are getting more and more rare, less and less people are using these because of the digital cameras. Um, the light meter will, it can calculate like 30 seconds. If I take a reading, it'll tell me at 30 seconds uh, if I'm like having some light coming in or not. Um, it can go more than 30 seconds in this case, a minute or two. So I can take a, a quick reading and I have my answer. If you don't have a light meter, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a camera, uh, you can still get the answer. With the camera, You'll turn off all your lights and you'll see maybe your uh, uh, computer is making some light or there's a bit of light coming from the a lamp outside the window. As long as it's not coming into your background, you're fine. You take your camera and then you, you do an exposure. You just click it on and let that minute roll and see if you get any noise, if you get any uh, um, parasite light coming in if it's affecting your picture. So you take a few shots and you test. You test the, um, the, uh, the, the ambient light to see if you're fine or not. Um, one way to cut light out of a window, if you don't have any black fabric, you can use foil. Just uh, like in the kitchen, the foil will block 100% of the light. If it's taped properly, then it's gonna block the light completely so you can foil your windows. I did that in Japan uh, for a while because I was shooting in my room and the neighbors were wondering what I was up to because all my windows were <laughs> covered by foil. So they were like, what's this foreigner doing <laughs> in this room? I was like, I'm taking like painting pictures. That's all. Um, fun, fun. If you're working by yourself, there's a few tools that can be useful. Um, a few tricks also. The laser pointer is a very useful tool. If you're working on a black background or dark gray, um, you're not sure where, uh, what, what, what space your camera is covering and where's the edge of the frame. So what you do is you go to your camera when you're, and you, you use the, the pointer to find your corners. And you're like, okay, you're looking, this is my corner. You look, oh boy, okay, I got plenty of space. And you look at the other corner and you look at the other one and like, Okay, I got all this space, and you look at it. It's like, okay, I got a huge amount of space. What I could do is I could tape, I could put a, a line of tape on the, from the camera to that corner if I really wanted to be precise. 
So I know exactly the angle. So if I'm moving in the space, I know, okay, I can go here, but here I cannot go more than this or else I'm outside the frame. So the tape where the laser went, I could put a tape there and, and find out. What I do sometimes when I use my black fabric, I'll put some black tape on the black fabric where my cor corners are. And that usually, that's usually enough for me to sometime okay, look back again and, and find out where my, my uh, frame ends and if I'm outside the frame or inside the frame. So laser pointer, useful. It's not necessary. There's other ways to do it, but it's a, it's a good tool. They come uh, pretty cheap. Little red lights, as head headlamps or here in the room. And the last thing is like, how do you focus if you have a model? You know how do you make a focus on the model manually with a flashlight. But if you don't have a model and you want to do some freestyle, you can use a chair, you can use a tripod, you put it where your tape is, where your zone of uh, creation is. You go to the camera and you, you focus on the tripod. And once your focus is done, Then you move the tripod out of the way, and voila. You know that right here, this is my focus, and I know I have all that space to uh, create with. So I have plenty of uh, room to do my, my kata or my dem demonstration, or to sit my model and, and do some portraits. Um, there's one more thing. I, I usually have all my lights on a table, on a big table, completely outside the frame. And closer, I'll have a small table that I will use um, for uh, the lights I need right now. Like this will be a selection of lights right, right here for the shots I'm working on. So there, it's, it's not as much of a, a mess or a choice. I uh, have these ones I want to work on this portrait. I want to work on this shot with these three lights, let's say. And then I, I, I work like this. Sometimes I'll use the floor if nobody's walking around. Sometimes I'll use the floor and, and put the, um, the lights behind the model or under the chair if she's sitting on the chair or just on the sides a bit outside the frame. I find a small table, a small black table nearby is uh, very helpful. So um, black glove can be a, a good option, like I mentioned before. If ever the buttons on a flashlight is not at the right place and you need to do certain movements, you just cover it, turn around, switch it off. And then uh, you can control when, exactly when the flashlight goes off. These are small tricks. Turning around is, is another trick if you have um, if you have a, a light and you cannot find the button, all of a sudden you're like in the dark and you don't know where your button is, you can just take it away from the camera and hide it like this and then leave out of the frame or you know, take the time to find a button. So these are the tricks we, we find with time. Sometime on the lights like this, um, I'll, I'll uh, have another side that's black I'll have some car cardboard, uh, some you know, craft, pa pa craft pa paper, craft <laughs> black paper here, or some foil here covering, so I can end like this when I move. I just end like this, and the camera doesn't see the source anymore. I mean, that's another way to end your pictures. But knowing all your buttons by heart is a a, a plus when you're light painting in the dark. Dress in. In dark clothes, usually I don't even have white here. Um, uh, I have more dark, uh, darker pants and dark tops. Uh, the glove is good. You can have belts with you know things like this, but I find the best. Sometimes I'll have a tool. I'll have a tool in, in in one of my pockets like this. But I find the best is the table or the floor with a few of uh, a few selection of tools. Um, dum, 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 dum. Music. Music is very important to me uh, because music is rhythm, music is beat, music is creation. I always have a good selection of music. I mean, I have tons of playlists, tons of different types of music. 
music that will take me in other worlds, music that will bring some, some bass and some energy. Um, depending on the shooting in the model, I have all kinds of playlists to start the day, to bring the energy up, uh, to relax for lunch and to do this again. And there's all kinds of music I have. I work uh, hard on my playlist and, and finding the, the right songs for the right feeling, for the right movement. So I use music constantly. Um, on, in this demo, we're not going to use music because of, of uh, the rights to the artist. So we're going to respect these rights. And we're going to just do it like we're going to imagine the music. We're going to create our own beats. Um, when I light paint by myself, the music, I will completely get influenced by the music and listen to the beat and use that as a creation tool, as a guide. I'll, I'll take some music that really inspires me, that makes me move, and you know, I'll use the rhythm to create. So it is important. We have to remember the light painting is first, first it's movement. Before anything else, it's movement. If it's not moving, then it's not light painting because it's all about the trail that we leave behind. So to inspire us to move and to create interesting movements, then the music becomes key. That said, um, if you're a martial artist, if you're an athlete, if you practice any kind of um, uh, sports, you can utilize what you've learned from these activities and uh, create with, with, with this, integrate that in your light painting. If you're doing Tai Chi, if you're doing yoga, you, they, these are all movements, they're all good, that can be used to influence your light painting. So your movement, your style is what matters. I mean, I got my own style. It's a form of dancing influenced by martial art. I'm not a professional martial artist, but I, I did take some lessons when I was a child. You know, martial art is part of my life indirectly, and uh, it influences, um, especially on the energy level, it influences my movement. So there's a bit of martial art and dance in what I do. So this is uh, the base of my movements, and this is what creates my movements. So use what you have, use who you are. If you're into very quick and speedy, and you're like, your personality is like that, then do a light painting like that. If you're a very calm person and you want to move slower, change settings, use different lights, and discover a very slow light painting, and you'll get a very personal result. You'll get something that reflects who you are. So that's what's important, is like, I show you uh, examples, but then you find your own way. You, the, I uh, open some new doors, and then you walk in and you do what works for you. Um, and voila, that's, that's what I had to say about movements and about music. So your stu studio setup. Um, Working with a team, working with a model. Tomorrow I'll, I'll be talking about this for sure. It's very important the way you work with your model, who you work with, how, what you create as an experience, all of that matters and all that will influence the final result. So we'll cover that more tomorrow. But um, like I just said, everything influences your, 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 your art, your light painting, and everything influences you, who you surround yourself with, the type of music, uh, the type of food, the type of everything, the type of uh, life you live, uh, all of this influences your art and it will show indirectly and directly in your light painting. So all these choices you make are important. They will bring you to a higher place or bring you to a higher result. And tomorrow we'll talk a bit more about that and how I discovered all these things through light painting. Um, so after we uh, after um, after after lunch today, we're gonna go through a bunch of different tools. Uh, look at how we test the tools, uh, how we learn from the tools, and then how we integrate them into a picture that becomes one. Um, if you have a model or a subject or uh, a scenery that is 
one way and you do a light painting that's not connected with this scenery, with this model, it becomes like two different things in one picture, it doesn't work. I think the key of making a great light painting is that the light painting is completely integrated with the subject, with the context. And that is key. So finding, and that takes maybe some experience in some case, but finding like, okay, this tool, this effect, this person, oh, this fire is so fire, and she's wearing this costume, and I want to make some fire because she loves fire. And then I'll take oranges, and I'll take yellows, and I'll take lights that matches the, the model, the subject. I'll create something that fits, so the image it becomes one, one thing. Um, that's the, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, and this is a very uh, uh, another important key to a successful image, a successful light painting. So um, yeah, um, I guess we're gonna take a, a, a lunch break. Our studio's ready, uh, cameras ready, and tools are ready. To, uh, and after that, we're gonna go through every tool and see all the effects they do. And please feel free to ask us questions and um, we're here to answer. Uh, take care and I'll see you very soon in about an hour at uh, learnster.com. <laughs>